This is the X570 Tai Chi. Now up until now I've looked at $200 boards and I still think this is where the value is. But this is a $400 X570 board with a lot of cool features. So we're going to check this board out today. So first up we have 8 SATA ports, 2, 3, 4 fan connectors, a front panel USB-C as well as a front panel USB-3 connector. Now the PCIe configuration is 3 full length slots, so we have 16x, 8x, and 4x. This is great, it allows us to put whatever you want into this board. I much rather like this configuration than the other budget boards I've looked at. We also get two 1x slots. We also have a power reset and debug LED. This is great, I wish all the X570 boards had this. Now we can actually take off this big metal plate with an included T8 driver. And once we get it off, disconnect the fan connector. Underneath, we can see that there are one, two, three M.2 slots, a BIOS battery, as well as the chipset fan and heatsink. Now this chipset heatsink doesn't have the most amount of surface area, and I don't know how useful the fan will be, but we can see there's actually a thermal pad connected to it, to the actual big metal plate we just took off. So we have lots of thermal headroom there, or at least we should. Now on the back of this big metal plate, we also have thermal pads for all the M.2 drives. So this is cool, as Rock is actually making use of this giant metal thing that they put on the board. So that's always a good thing. Now, I am kind of worried about these little vents here because they are directly over the fan. So I'm not exactly sure how much noise that's going to make because anything in front of the fan intake is going to make more noise. So we'll test that. So finally, after going over all that, we have the rear I.O. So we have four USB 3 ports, three USB 3.2, a USB-C. We have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as optical out, audio out, and a BIOS flashback, which is cool because you can upgrade your BIOS in the future. If, if a new CPU comes out, you can pick up this board. You don't have to have an old CPU in the board to update it. As well as that, we have a HDMI out and a clear CMOS button, which is always welcome. So the VRM heat sinks. They're basically just block shape heat sinks with a heat pipe going from either side. But this VRM is really massive. It's 14 phases. Each phase is 60 amps. So it's 10 for the CPU core, 4 for the SOC. So it's a lot of overkill. Azeroth did put these giant thick thermal pads on the inductors. I'm not sure why, because these don't make that much heat. But it's better than not having them, I guess. We have the same thermal pads on the, the heat sink as well. So let's get this thing on the test bench. We'll test thermals, see how far we can actually clock this memory on this board. After running real bench for a little bit more than an hour, we have 33.5 C on the actual MOSFETs on the VRMs, and the ambient air is 23.5C. Okay, so here we have the BIOS, and it's pretty self-explanatory BIOS, like most BIOS. So, overclocking is an OC tweaker, and here you actually have the more basic OC settings, so like your timings and stuff. But I noticed a lot of this stuff was missing. So if we actually go over to advanced, then go to AMD overclocking, we get this silly message that the Extreme 4 had that I checked out. And I just think this is silly because it's just like a ULA. You just see it, accept, there you go. You never actually read the thing. And if we actually exit, we actually have to go in there and accept and decline or decline it every single time. But basically this is where every single overclocking setting is. So basically you have duplicate overclocking settings and it actually applies either one. So I believe this one will take priority though. So if you set the same voltage, so say you set SOC voltage here and then set it 
over here. The the other one, the AMD overclocking one, will actually take priority. But basically, in here we have like every single overclocking setting that's not on the OC tweaker menu. I'm not sure why that's a thing. Like, what? Why do we need two menus? But like, as you can see, there's all kinds of timings that isn't on the other one. So if you're missing a overclocking setting, it's probably in AMD overclocking. This is also where you'll find like PBO settings and stuff like that. Something that's odd, the VDDG settings here, the voltage control for the Infinity, Infinity Fabric is here, but it's not on the other menu. And that's a sort of important voltage if you're gonna push some memory overclocking. But I just thought I would let you guys know that because that's very weird. The Extreme 4 had the same AMD overclocking. It just had the exact same settings. This one actually has more settings. So I would honestly just ignore this OC tab here and go to this one here. Other than that, it's pretty standard stuff. Um, this board will overclock memory pretty much just as good as the MSI board I checked out before. So right now, we are running at 3800 CL 1414 16. I could probably lower it to 15 and tighten it a bit more, but it is stable right now. So that's cool. This is as about as fast as I would recommend anybody go because after that, you have to match the Infinity Fabric divider to two gigahertz and that gets kind of unstable really, really quick. Other than that, it's pretty much your standard BIOS. Oh yeah, and there's RGB. So yeah, that's a thing. So another thing I wanted to mention is this board enters the BIOS super slow. So I'm gonna see if I can actually show it to you guys here. So right now we're just hitting the delete key. And okay, so waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'm not slowing down the clip or anything. This is literally how fast it enters the BIOS. There you go. So it takes like, what, 10 seconds <laughs> to enter the BIOS. It, it doesn't break anything and it's not a bad thing. And it does this with stock settings. I thought at first maybe it was the memory overclock because I didn't notice it the first time. But that that's just how slow this BIOS is. It's also the same speed. Like if we just save changes and exit, it takes it several, several seconds to, to actually restart. So it's just kind of slow entering and exiting the BIOS. The X570 Tai Chi is a great board, there's no doubt about it. It's got great memory overclocking, Azurock provided a great thermal solution for all your M.2 drives and the chipset, the RGB isn't tacky, the VRM is just complete overkill, the PCI configuration allows you to be really flexible, and it's just a great board. There's nothing wrong with this board at all. BIOS has tons of options, and although it kind of opens up and exits really slowly, and it's kind of odd. It, it works out great. Now, this is also a $400 motherboard, and a lot of the other budget boards I looked at were $200, so that's twice. That, that's two motherboards. So I don't know that I can say it's worth it. I got this board really cheap, and so I got this board like $100 cheaper than it retails for. At that price, $300, maybe even $350, I would say yes, go and get it. 400 it just seems like a lot for a motherboard to me, but that's just my own personal opinion. $400, we're talking about the same price point as the Z390 Dark, the X299 Dark, many Rampage boards, like top tier boards of any platform are $400, $500 even. And this is within range of that price point. 
and to me it just seems like that's yeah, a lot of money for a motherboard. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was informative and helpful. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked the video, give me a thumbs down and write in the comments why you disliked the video. And if there are any other X570 boards or any other boards in general or anything you want me to check out, just also leave it in the comments. Until next time, bye.